Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome you all and thank everyone for joining the APR SAF 29 online stargazing event. My name is Hiroko Suzuki from the DAXA Space Education Center, and I'll be your host for this event. This program is provided by the APR SAF Space Education for All Working Group co-organized by the Indonesian agency BRIN and JAXA in collaboration with the National Astronomical Observatory of Japan. We have prepared this event as an opportunity for students to see and think about how the sky looks different at different parts of the world. Today, about 260 people, many from the Asian Pacific region, registered for this event. Have you ever wondered what the stars look like from other parts of the world? The stars and constellations appear in the sky depending on the latitude and the longitude or the time difference. Even if you see stars at the same time on the same day, the sky looks different depending on the place you observe at home. There are constellations that you can see from the Southern Hemisphere that you cannot see from the Northern Hemisphere. The constellations look higher, lower, or even upside down, depending on your location. Even if it's at the same time and same latitude, some places are in the day and others at night because of the time difference. In the daytime, you cannot see stars, of course, but you can see stars at nighttime. This is because of Earth's rotation. We also made movies about this. Please watch them too. And in this event, we will broadcast from six observatories, Tokyo in Japan, Canberra in Australia, Hawaii, in the United States of America, Atacama in Chile, Okinawa in Japan, and Bandan and Kupan in Indonesia. First, we will see the night sky in Tokyo, Japan. This is a map of Tokyo. National Astronomical Observatory of Japan is located at Mitaka in Tokyo. Dr. Hitoshi Yamaoka and his staff members are at this observatory and using this telescope. This is a star chart for Tokyo. We will show star charts for each observatory. Looking at the star charts, um, you can see that constellations differ in each observatory. Good evening, Dr. Yamaoka. Hi, good evening, Hiroko. Good evening. Uh, may I ask what time is it? In Mitaka now? Uh, now is uh, 9 p.m. Uh, 7. 9 p.m. Uh, yes, uh, mm -hmm. it is uh, somewhat uh, deep night. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's um, not good for the, it's not good weather for the watching stars. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, in Tokyo, uh, the typhoon is coming, so oh. uh, the uh, sky was uh, uh, covered by clouds. And uh, uh, we uh, will have heavy rain tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, mm -hmm. uh, this star chart shows the uh, sky above the cloud. Yes. So um, could you explain what we can see when the sky is sunny? Yes. Uh, the center of the uh, this chart uh, which is uh, the highest part of the sky, the zenith, uh, there is uh, three bright stars. It makes a summer triangle. One, two, and three. And the, the first object we will uh, show is in the uh, constellation Cygnus. Cygnus means a swan. Uh, I'll show so the, the, this, yes, screen. Uh, yes. this uh, cross shape is called a uh, flying swan. 
Ou da Nozan Cross. Uh, the object we will show is uh, Beta Iguini. Uh, the, the other name is Albireo, uh, which is located on the head of the swan. Uh, this star is very uh, typical double star, uh, which is uh, easily seen with uh, telescope. Can mm -hmm. I show that? Yes, please. We would love to see the Albireo. Okay. Um, everyone, if you want to see our very real fish, that yes. bottom, please. This uh, is a movie which was uh, caught by the uh, telescope uh, Hiroko san has shown. Mm -hmm. You can see the fluctuations uh, of the stars, not uh, all the same uh, appearance. You mm -hmm. can see two stars in this field. Mm -hmm. One is brighter and one is dimmer. Mm -hmm. Brighter one, uh, somewhat orange color, and uh, dimmer one is somewhat blue color. Uh, it is a difference of the surface temperature of these stars. Mm -hmm. The brighter one is about 4,000 uh, degrees centigrade, uh, Celsius. And the uh, blue one is about 11,000 uh, degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. The dimmer one is hotter. These two stars are uh, not uh, gravitationally bind, uh, bounded, but they are uh, accidentally uh, seen to the very near direction from the Earth. These two stars have uh, different uh, distance from us. One is about uh, 350 light years, and one is about 400 light years. But it is still uh, in uh, discussion whether <laughs> they are not uh, by, uh, related uh, physically, but uh, in uh, latest uh, research shows they are uh, in different uh, places, different uh, distance are different. Hey, thank uh, you very much for showing that. Yeah. yeah it's uh, beautiful. Yeah. Can I move to the next uh, object? Yes. Um, may I ask what we are seeing? Um, I'll show you the slide first. Oh, I will show it fast. Okay, please. Sorry. Okay. Can you see this? Yes. What is this? I think is everybody it? knows it. What is this? <laughs> well, yeah. probably, uh, almost all uh, attendants know this. It mm -hmm. is Saturn. Yeah, Saturn, Saturn is the uh, sixth uh, planet of our solar system. The very large and uh, the characteristic of this planet is a ring. Mm -hmm. uh, Saturn is uh, only one planet with, uh, which uh, ring is easily seen by a uh, small telescope. You can see the uh, ring, ring is not all, uh, homogeneous, but there is a gap or a, a brighter part or a dimmer part. Oh, 
so if you see a ring, there is bright part and dimmer part if you look closer. Yeah. Can everybody see that too? There's a gap between the ring. And uh, this is a movie uh, which is taken with uh, the same uh, telescope, 50 mm -hmm. centimeter telescope. But uh, if we uh, edit uh, this movie to the uh, steel uh, image, we can see very uh, clear shape mm -hmm. like this. Are you showing the image? Oh, can yes, you see I can it? see it. Yes, uh, this we can is see the, it. Uh, the image uh, edited from the movie. Mm -hmm. So the movie one shake like very hard, but why uh, does yeah. this image doesn't shake? Ah, uh, yeah, uh, the shake is caused by the disturbance of the atmosphere, uh, Earth's atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, to stack of uh, each uh, moment, mm -hmm. uh, it may, uh, the such turbulence is average, and we can see the clear image. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see this ring uh, shape now, but uh, uh, next to next year, and um, 2025, Mm -hmm. We will see uh, this ring from the very edge side. So uh, it is very thin. Uh, we cannot see the ring at that moment. Oh, so um, this year is a good chance to see this um, yes, Southern yes, with exactly. a ring. Yes, and yeah. uh, uh, please see uh, this year, next year, mm -hmm. and uh, next next year, and mm -hmm. after that we can see the ring of the other side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everyone, please watch the southern this year and next year and next next year. Yeah, okay. Oh, it's very nice to see the southern. Thank you, thank you for showing that. Um, thank you, Dr. Yamaoka, for showing us the RVO and the Southern. Um, it was very nice to see the Southern. Uh, so during your presentation, um, yes, we received some questions yeah. from attendees. Um, may I go to question session? Okay. So um, the first question is that, um, hello, may I ask, is the if the alveol starts over each other? Could you As I explained, it mm -hmm. is in uh, discussion, but uh, recent uh, research shows mm -hmm. they are not related uh, physically, but mm -hmm. uh, seen accidentally in the same direction. Mm. Thank you very much for answering that. And the second question is that um, it is interesting that um, you can see the um, thing in 2025. Um, that's interesting. Um, does that kind of thing happen quite often? Oh, yeah. Uh, Saturn is uh, rounding the, the, uh, the sun uh, about 30 years. Uh, in 30 years, we can uh, uh, we see the a plane of the being uh, twice. Mm -hmm. So uh, the such uh, disappearance of the ring occur every uh, 15 years. 15 years. Oh. So uh, in 2010, 200, uh, 2010, uh, we had. Uh, such uh, disappearance, mm -hmm. and uh, also uh, 1995 and 1980, uh, the uh, ring of Saturn was disappeared from the Earth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank yes, thank you very much. That's so interesting. Um, 
So the next question we have is, is there anything on the dim zone of the southern rings? Ah, uh, it's a great question. Mm -hmm. uh, for many years, uh, we uh, astronomers think that uh, the gap has no uh, matter. Ah, yes, uh, the ring is constructed by the uh, small ices. Uh, about uh, sa some uh, centimeter to a meter of di a diameter. Uh, such ice uh, are orbiting the uh, Saturn, and uh, uh, it is on its equatorial plane, or, or we see the ring as a very uh, thin uh, frame. And uh, the, at the gap, there is a smaller number of uh, such ices are rotating. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, it's uh, from from the earth or uh, from a uh, distant place, it is uh, not so bright, but rather uh, dim. But there is a small, uh, there are smaller number of such particles are rotating. Thank you very much, okay. Dr. Yamaka. Thank you. Um, so we have more questions, but we um we are end of the time for the Q and A session. But um, if you have any questions to Dr. Yamaka, um, please type in and he will answer it. Um, he will type it for you. I will type it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, please um, give a reaction to Dr. Yamaka. See you later. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So we will go to next observatory. We will go to Canberra in Australia. Dr. Brad Tucker is there. Hello. How's it Hello. going? Hello. How is it going? How are you? Great. And great. And you? I'm good. Unfortunately, um, we've had clear weather mm -hmm. perfectly all week, except tonight. Um, where uh, we uh, the rains are coming in. Now, because we're in the Southern Hemisphere, mm -hmm. um, we are still in winter. Oh. And so uh, it still is a bit cold and it's mm -hmm. uh, the temperature is going down tonight and we'll be scheduled to go to about minus six degrees tonight. Wow, minus. Um, so we're bracing ourselves for a little bit of snow. Mm -hmm. Australia does get snow, believe oh. it. Uh, oh, I didn't know that, yeah. That's right. We only get we get a little bit, mm -hmm. um, and usually snow is not good for astronomy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we will look at um, some images recorded from earlier in the mm -hmm. week when we had beautiful weather, and we're going to look at kind of two interesting things. So by being in the southern hemisphere, we see everything kind of upside down. It's the right way mm -hmm. to us, but to the northern hemisphere, it's upside down. So, for instance. Orion, what we won't look at it, but in Australia, we call Orion the saucepan. saucepan. So to to Australia, it looks like it's a pot where there's mm -hmm. a handle and a bottom part because Orion is upside down. But we are going to look at two things. Mm -hmm. um, the first is the Southern Cross. So in our star chart that we're looking at, the Southern Cross is towards the bottom right. Now, the star chart as we heard earlier, north is to the top and south is to the bottom. So on the star chart, it looks like the Southern Cross is actually upside down because the way we see it, the south is on top and the north is on bottom. Oh. And so our view of the Southern Cross is very different from the star chart. And I'm going to show that now. So firstly, I always like to show at Mount Shremlo, we do have kangaroos. Kangaroos are everywhere. It's the one thing we don't realize. Australian animals um, are all over our observatory. Um, but 
when we look at the southern skies, we see two things as we'll see the Southern Cross and the large Magellanic Cloud. And so we get really beautiful skies. We can see Orion over here, and that's what we call the saucepan. And we're going to look at the large Magellanic Cloud and the Southern Cross. And so this was the image we took uh, with the camera outside on Monday. So there was a little bit of a moon. And this is what the Southern Cross looks like to us. Oh. So in the star chart, this was upside down. But this is what it looks like to us every night. Mm -hmm. So we have the five bright stars of the Southern Cross. But in Australia, we use two other stars with the Southern Cross, Alpha Centauri and Beta Centauri. And Alpha Centauri is really special because Alpha Centauri is the closest star to us besides the sun. This is our neighbor star system that has three stars. And so we actually use these sets of stars to find our place in the Earth. So in the Northern Hemisphere, we have Polaris, which is the North Star. And that tells us where the North Celestial Pole, the point the Earth is spinning is. But in the Southern Hemisphere, we use the Southern Cross. And the way we do it is make by making a funny triangle. We say, we're going to take the long part of the cross and we're going to go three times down. So one, two, three. That point is the point as viewed from Canberra where the earth is spinning. Or we can make a triangle and complete it and find out where south is using the Alpha and Beta Centauri, those neighboring star to us. And when we look at this, if you stare at this point for hours on end, this is what the sky looks like. If you take an wow. image constantly, this is the point the Earth is spinning in the Southern Hemisphere near the Southern Cross. And so we use this to understand where South and North are, how the Earth is spinning, um, and uh, the rotation of the Earth in the Southern Hemisphere. So it's a really special thing that I love looking at in the Southern skies. And Alpha Centauri itself is special because it is a, it's actually a trin trinary star. There's three stars, but we can see that this blob is actually one star and two stars right next to it, Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B. Uh, and Proxima Centauri, which goes around the outside of these two stars, um, has some planets around it. We do know that they host exoplanets, planets around other stars. Now, in, in Australia... There's a huge connection between the uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. These are the indigenous people of Australia uh, and the sky. People here have been observing the sky for 60,000 years. And I live on the traditional lands of what's called the Ngunnawal and Nambu people. And lots of countries, as we call them, or groups in Australia, have records of space. And a lot of them are along the Southern Cross. And in fact, to the Gamilaroi people and a lot of people in Australia, the Southern Cross is called Yaran. And Yaran is a very special set of stars. And it is of the Southern Cross. And it's actually the story of the first man to die on Earth. And what happens is there is a group of people who are hungry. There's a very big drought. And they go and hunt a wallaby. A wallaby is like a small kangaroo. But the second man says to the first man, you don't kill the wallaby. That's a wrong thing. You're not allowed to do it. That is our totem. And so the one who did is taken up and lays down next to Yaran, the white gum tree. And the white cockatoos, which are birds, carrying him up to the sky and preserve him in the stars as a reminder to people not to eat their totem, not to eat the native animals without being wary of nature. And so the Southern Cross is really important to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people all across Australia. And so it, like a lots of knowledge in Australia, there's different levels of the stories that tell customs. For instance, even the rituals around death and burial, all of this is preserved in the knowledge of the Southern Cross and Alpha and Beta Centauri, the pointers. So it's a very important thing to us. So important, Australia put it on its national flag.
Now, the second object we're going to take a look at is not of a set of stars. It is of our neighbor dwarf galaxy, the Large Magellanic Cloud. And so this it was taken um, earlier with a wide field telescope. Uh, and this is our neighbor dwarf galaxy. The Large Magellanic Cloud and its neighbor, the Small Magellanic Cloud, are only visible in the southern skies. Now, people have observed the Milky, uh, the Magellanic Clouds for hundreds of years, thousands of years. Uh, they are named after the explorer Magellan, hence why the word Mag Magellanic. And we do have one that's large and one that's small. And these are what we call dwarf galaxies or satellite galaxies. The large and small Magellanic Cloud are orbiting and slowly falling in to our Milky Way. And we think eventually, in millions of years down the road, that our Milky Way will pull the large Magellanic Cloud into it and eventually swallow it up. Now, this galaxy is much smaller than the Milky Way. It has about 20 billion stars. And we currently estimate our Milky Way galaxy has three to 400 billion stars. Um, it's about 170 or so thousand light years away. So it's still kind of in our neighborhood. Um, and again, it's also much smaller. It's about 30,000 years side to side compared to our Milky Way, which is about 100,000. But it also is important um, using the Milky Way as well with Aboriginal people in Australia. And there's a major story that uses the Milky Way and the large Magellanic Cloud called Warambol. And what Warambol is, is about the idea that in Australia, Aboriginal and Twilight Strait Islanders didn't use the stars to navigate often. They used the dust in the Milky Way and the large Magellanic Cloud. They used the dark areas they call dark constellations. So they used the absence of stars to actually find their way. And they use what's called the emu. The emu is a, it's like an ostrich. It's a very funny Australian bird uh, that runs. And they use the position of the emu. That's what an emu kind of looks like to understand when to eat, when to hunt, and when to collect water. In April, the emu appears nice in the sky, like it's running. And this is a sign that the emus are breeding. And what this means is the male emus have left the nest and you can go and collect the eggs for food sources. But around um, July, the emus are no longer running. They lose the legs. And that means the male emu has gone back to the nest and it's time to stop collecting the eggs so that there's enough emus that are born next year. So there's a food source. And by November, the emu has almost disappeared. And that's a sign that the spring rains are coming. So you should go out and collect your water because this will be your water sources for the next few months until and when the summer comes and the dry season comes. So in Australia, the connection to the stars and space is so important to culture, living, uh, and appreciating the beauty of the sky. Thank you very much. It's so interesting to hear the stories of uh, um, all that kind of stories in Australia. Thank you. So um, we have received many questions. Um, so first question we received is that, how does the Milky Way look like in the Southern Hemisphere? Does it also look upside down? So to us, we actually mm -hmm. see more of the Milky Way in the Southern Hemisphere than you do in the Northern Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we see in the Milky Way is actually the center of the Milky Way in the constellation Sagittarius is only visible in the Southern skies. So to us, it actually takes up most of the sky, mm -hmm. but we do see a different part of the Milky Way than you see in the Northern Hemisphere. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the next question is, um, can we see the Northern Pole in Australia? No. So, yeah, we are, we're not allowed to see Polaris Pol uh, or the North Celestial Pole. And that is because the Earth is round. Just as we are seeing different objects and we are seeing them in different orientations, the North Pole is pointed away. And so we're not visible we can't uh, go and see it if you're towards the equator 
you can start to just maybe see it, but you have to be a little bit further north. And so just as in the Northern Hemisphere, you can't really see the Southern Cross unless you're towards um, the equator. Um, we You uh, miss out on it and we miss out on Polaris in the North Pole. Thank you. So the next question is, can we see black holes in a telescope? Uh, so we do. Um, we look at black holes quite a lot and we look at the um, activity that comes out of black holes. And again, one of the big black holes that we have nearby is called Sagittarius A star. This is the super massive black hole uh, in the center of our Milky Way. And so it's been studied a lot in Australia. It's also studied a lot in Chile um, and seeing how the stars move around that super massive black hole and even how gas can come out of other black holes. Thank you very much for answering. Um, everyone, please um, put the reaction button to- um, Thank you, everyone. Brad. Brad, thank you very much. Thank you. So next, we will go to next observatory. I will share my screen first. Next, we will go to Hawaii, yay. We will see the live stream from Subaru Asahi star camera. This camera is set at the Subaru telescope on the mountain of Mauna Kea in Hawaii. So this is a star chart for Hawaii. Good evening again, Dr. Yamaoka. Hi, uh, I will explain the star. Uh, Mm -hmm. In Hawaii, in Hawaii, uh, we can now see. Mm -hmm. Um, do you, could you tell us what time is it in Hawaii now? Uh, now, uh, mid midnight two a uh, two uh, two hour uh, two and thirty six uh, a.m. Uh, oh, so it's two a.m. It's like after midnight and I think everybody is sleeping at that time. So um, could you tell us what we can see in Hawaii now? Yes, now uh, we cannot see the summer triangle. Summer triangle is now the west on the northwest uh, horizon. And you can see the two uh, stars of the summer triangle. Hey, can you uh, point? Yeah, signals and uh, oh, yes, signals. yes, yes, and uh, the western, yeah, yes, 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 this one, yes, yes. and this we cannot see star. this one, yes, yeah, and, uh, third one is uh, below the horizon, yes, and uh, uh, we can see the uh, some uh, autumn constellations and uh, winter constellations, so uh, we uh, move to the uh, yes. Live camera. Yes, let's move to the live camera. I hope everyone will like it. Okay, I will share my screen. Okay, everyone, okay. are you seeing the live camera? You can see the, uh, but uh, this is not live, but uh, oh. uh, please. Uh, Great. Yeah. The sun uh, uh the previous sky. Oh, uh, previous previous skies. Uh, okay. Sorry about time. that. <laughs> Sorry, I will. So this, so I'm trying to move it. Yes. Oh, <laughs> this so is it's... live uh, uh, one. Uh, the very bright uh, mm -hmm. object is the moon. Mm, uh, it right is there. the last quarter moon, and uh, uh, there are uh, the clouds covered the uh, almost whole sky. Mm -hmm. But some bright uh, stars can be seen in mm -hmm. this uh, moment. Uh, live camera is uh, the uh, uh, has. Uh, 
the mechanism to go back the time. So mm -hmm. uh, we look the uh, one hour back. One, one hour, hour back. back. One hour back. Hope I can. Okay. Okay. One hour back. Okay, like this. Is this like this? Okay. Is it okay? Can we see? Oh. Okay. It's very bright. Uh, we can see the constellation Orion, Orion uh, in the uh, very near to the horizon. Uh, can you see the three stars? Oh, yeah. Yes, I three can see it. This one. And this one. The uh, surrounding four stars. One, two, two three. Is this it? Who is it? Yes, yes, yes. This one. This is a constellation Orion, and the northern uh, or upper part, there is a Taurus, constellation Taurus, the V-shaped but uh, upside down. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, point it? Yes. Uh, no, 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 no. Sorry, I uh, can't. I think this one. And... Uh, yes, yes, this is the brightest star in the constellation Taurus. Mm -hmm. Uh, they call the Aldebaran, and uh, V-shaped. Yes, it's V-shaped, but uh, upside down is uh, mm -hmm. the Hyades cluster. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, we uh, can we look back. Yes. One hour. One hour. One hour. Two hours. Two hours. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Um, I'm trying to pray. So. Yeah, some. Um, it takes time. Okay, sorry about this because of the time, But uh, two hours. Yeah. Does it work? Oh yes. yes. Okay. So, so, so. The moon is uh, before rising, so we can see very uh, clear sky. Uh, we just see the shooting star, but the uh, shooting star cannot be a... Uh, well, I actually uh, um, was routing, yes. looking at this, uh, this live stream and I saw some um, shooting star. So everyone, if you go to this website, you might be able to see some yes. shooting star. Yeah. And uh, at this time, there is... Uh, Another uh, mm -hmm. star cluster. Mm -hmm. uh, can you point it? Yes, that one. That one is a uh, famous star cluster, Pleiades. In, in Japan, it is called Subaru. It is also belongs to the constellation Taurus and uh, there is also a bright star on the upper side. It is Jupiter. Jupiter, uh, the planet. The largest planet mm -hmm. in our solar system. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we are very pleased to show the starry sky in mm -hmm. on the Mauna Kea. And uh, we will show the uh, movie uh, which explain the tale of the stars in Hawaii. Yes. So let's watch the movie from Dr. Kumiko Usuda Sato. She will, stand, she will explain about star line in Hawaii and Hawaiian stories within the sky. Okay. Could you share the videos, please? Yes, we are seeing the screen. Could you play the button? Play the video, please. Mm -hmm. So now, um, um, Dr. Usuda Sato will um talk about the stories of Hawaiian star line. Um, Dr. 
Kumiko Usasato is in Sivaritis, is at the Sparrows Telescope. Um, let's come back and see the video later. Yeah. Now, so now we will go to Atacama in Chile. Mr. Ito is at Alma. Okay. Yes. Uh, buenos there? días. Good morning. Buenos días. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes, I can <laughs> okay. hear you. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I'm connecting from Chile now. Uh, in Chilean time, uh, just now, 9.45 at morning, uh, the sun is mm -hmm. rising now uh, mm -hmm. here. Uh, we can see the moon. You can see. <laughs> it's very oh, difficult. Can you see the moon? <laughs> well, I actually can't see it. Very, but very small. Can everybody see it? <laughs> okay, mm, okay. It might be hard. <laughs> yeah. But it's very bright. It's morning. Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, yeah, that is time difference. Uh, my name is Tetsuya Ito. I'm an engineer from NAOJ, and just now I'm working for Arma Observatory. Uh, ARMA is abbreviation for Atacama Large Millimeter and Submillimeter Array. Uh, in Spanish, ARMA means a soul. Uh, I'm in Operation Support Facility, OSF, in ARMA Observatory. This is a base camp of ARMA uh, at uh, about 3,000 meter high altitude. Uh, behind me, uh, it is a 12 meter diameter parabolic antenna. Oh, it looks uh, this very is big. one. <laughs> yes, very big. Yeah. meter. Yeah. Yes. And uh, this is one of our antenna. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, this is coming down to uh, OSF, this base camp for maintenance. This year is 10th anniversary of ARMA, and we are carrying out a special 10th year maintenance now. And uh, many of the remaining antennas are uh, at uh, 5,000 meter high. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want to share my screen. Mm -hmm. uh, can you see? Yes, I can. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is a map. Uh, where is Arma? Uh, Arma is in South America in Chile. Chile is west side of uh, South America and very long country. Uh, Arma is north part of Chile. Uh, here is Arma OSF and around here is a uh, high side of Arma. And Mm. Sorry, next page. Yes, mm. I'm showing a photo of a uh, five thousand meter high site. Uh, there are uh, many antennas. Uh, we have six, six, six antennas. Uh, there's uh, sorry, these antennas are called radio telescopes. Uh, we are using for astronomical the uh, with radio wave from astronomical object. By combining these 66 antennas, we can use them as one radio telescope uh, with large aperture. Uh, we can move these antenna uh, with transporter and it can extend up to 16 kilometer distance uh, in other words, uh, it can be used as an antenna with a diameter of 16 kilometers. Uh, it enables a uh, high resolution observation. Okay. Uh, we need to maintain not only antennas, uh, all, we, we have uh, receivers uh, uh, the back side of uh, this antenna dish. Uh, this is a uh, we call cryostat. Cryostat is a cooling machine, and this uh, part is uh, receivers. Receivers are cooled down to about two minus 270 degrees C Celsius. And uh, this is inside of the cryostat. 
the cluster is equipped with 10 receivers. Uh, these 10 receivers have uh, different uh, frequencies. Uh, each receiver, uh, th these are uh, cartridges, and these uh, receiver cartridges are um, uh, uh, we can see uh, on the uh, gold color uh, plate. Uh, this part are uh, all uh, minus 270 degree uh, in uh, using. And uh, next page. Uh, here in OSF, we need to replace the uh, poor condition receivers and uh, we need to install a modified receiver and a new uh, uh, function receiver uh, sometime. And, uh, as, <laughs> sorry, uh, this so is a picture. Yeah. <laughs> this is a picture of mm -hmm. uh, Milky Way from Atacama site. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. So beautiful. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, we can see Milky Way and we can see black part, uh, long part, uh, around here, around here, around here. And uh, by the way, uh, we uh, can see uh, some animals in Atacama area. This is fox and this is llamas. Uh, and um, uh, Atacama was once uh, a part of all the country Inca in 15th century. Inca people uh, created uh, constellations uh, originally. Uh, the constellations is very different from uh, constellation we using. Uh, this uh, constellation is the shape of this black part. A black part uh, we uh, astronom uh, we called uh, dark cloud. Uh, this dark cloud uh, shape uh, is fox uh, in people think. Uh, this part is mother llama, and this part is baby llama, for example. And uh, this top figure shows uh, results of radio observation. And uh, this is uh, Milky Way uh, with light. Uh, I attached the, some name of uh, Inca uh, constellation's name. And uh, this black part shape and this uh, result of uh, uh, radio wave uh, observation shape is very similar. Uh, it means uh, dark cloud uh, includes dust and uh, dust uh, shuts the light. Uh, we can uh, it uh, dark and uh, it uh, includes gas. Uh, this uh, radio wave is from gas, uh, carbon oxide. Uh, this dark cloud includes dust and gas. And uh, this uh, gas and dust is a material of uh, our uh, stars, many stars and planets. Uh, this is one of the results of uh, Aruma. Uh, the center of this picture is very young star, and uh, we can see a disk. Uh, this disk is dust, and uh, this uh, object is uh, HL star in Taurus, and uh, we can see many gaps uh, like rings. Uh, this gap plays. Uh, dust is concentrated, concentrated uh, to protostar, uh, prot, sorry, protoplanet. Uh, I uh, we think uh, this is a vast place of planets. And uh, next result is uh, it's recently uh, it released uh, last April. 
Uh, this is a, a jet uh, from black hole, and this is a um, accretion disk around the black hole. This black hole is in center of M87 galaxy. Uh, this is a uh, figure. Uh, this is a, a Maybe uh, this part is like this. Uh, this uh, observation is not only ARMA. Uh, some uh, telescopes are uh, uh, used uh, ARMA and Greenland Telescope and a Global Millimeter Wave VLBI Array. Uh, and this way, uh, ARMA is sometimes uh, cooperating with other telescopes, uh, other telescopes around the world. Okay, uh, my uh, slide is end. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for showing us the wonderful images. And uh, so it's so interesting. We, thank you very much. Um, we have received many questions. So yes, um, yes. Um, so I'll ask. Okay. The first question is, why do they use so many antenna? There were so many antenna. Oh, yes, yeah. yes. I see. Uh, uh, as I said, uh, we uh, want to make very large telescope, mm -hmm. but uh, we can't uh, 16 kilometer diameter telescope uh, uh, antenna. Uh, so that uh, we uh, put many antennas uh, very uh, uh, long distance uh, and uh, we uh, made one image with computer uh, from the data, many, many uh, data from many antennas. Mm -hmm. uh, so that uh, we can get very good uh, precise image, uh, very good uh, Mm, angular uh, resolution was very good. It became very good. Thank you very much. And next question is, how do I maintain a radio telescope? Okay. Yes. Uh, Expert. Uh, <laughs> thank you <Yes>. very much. <laughs> uh, just now, this telescope, uh, we know uh, the motor has a trouble. Uh, oh. Just now, uh, maintaining the motor. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually, uh, periodically, we need to change the uh, membrane. Membrane is sit in uh, here, uh, inside of this hole. Uh, this uh, seat is shut out the, uh, dust and uh, rain uh, from the uh, uh, receiver system. Uh, we need to uh, change the uh, membrane seat uh, periodically, and uh, we need to clean uh, air conditioning system filters or mm -hmm. uh, some oils of uh, motors. Uh, many things we need to do. Uh, we need to change the oil uh, of this sub-reflector. Uh, these are under maintenance. And uh, as I said, uh, in receiver, uh, we need to uh, replace bad uh, uh, degraded uh, receiver uh, uh, to new one. And uh, we add uh, another mm, modified new function uh, receiver uh, we need to install to the receiver system. Thank you very much for answering that. The next question is, yes. can Alma observe mm -hmm. the stars at night? During uh, night? Yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, during yeah, yeah. the daytime. I'm sorry. It's yes, pretty yes. different. Thank you very much. Yes, it's very important. Uh, radio telescope can observe in daytime. Uh, daytime, nighttime, uh, we can observe uh, all day, 24 hours, seven days. But one uh, large problem is wind. Uh, when uh, wind speed is very high, over 20 meters per second, uh, 
the dish has very strong power from wind and uh, it's uh, vibrating. Uh, it's not good to, uh, for observation. Uh, we need to stop the observation uh, when strong is wind. Thank you for answering. So next question is, why do, why do you need to cool it down to minus 270 degrees Celsius in the, the, the receiver? Yes, thank you, Vivet. Mm -hmm. um, uh, originally, uh, it is very similar to a refrigerator, uh, but uh, we need a special system uh, very low temperature. Uh, we are using uh, uh, high uh, uh, pressure helium gas, uh, and uh, we are using a special system uh, for cooling down. And uh, why we need uh, so cold temperature? Uh, we are using a uh, superconducting uh, chip in receiver system. Uh, superconducting chip, uh, we are using NEOP. Uh, this superconducting uh, uh, condition of NEOP is uh, under uh, minus 269 uh, Kelvin we need. Thank you. So the next question is, do animals such as, sorry, I can't pronounce it, llamas mm -hmm. in the Atacama Lama. come into the Arma radio telescope ground? Uh, in a 5,000 meter uh, side, uh, sometimes we can see. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, sorry, but, but that, that is not llama. Uh, that is Vicuña. And uh, llama is, yes. <laughs> Yama is uh, uh, some farmer uh, is uh, uh, keeping uh, them uh, for work or uh, some as a, uh, I don't know where, uh, for milk or uh, for some, um, Ooh, I don't know where, sorry. <laughs> ah, sorry. Uh, and other uh, farmers uh, uh, keeping uh, alpaca. Do you know alpaca? Alpaca, yes, I know. Alpaca, do, yes, material of uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, in uh, South America, uh, this uh, Atacama area, uh, mm -hmm. they are very popular animals. Thank you very much for answering. And our Q and A time is up. Uh, everybody, please um, put the push the reaction button to thank Mr. Ito. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. Bye. Okay, next I'll go to next observatory. We will go to Ishigatijima, Japan. Hi. Hi. Uh, first, I will, yeah. I'll introduce Ishigatijima. Ishigatijima is one of Japan's most southern islands, located like 1,950 kilometers from Tokyo. And in Ishigatijima, there is a big telescope called Murikaboshi. And I think um, Hanayama-san is beside this telescope today. Okay, good evening, Dr. Hanayama. Yes. Good evening. Um, could you tell us where you are and what uh, time it is in your area? Uh, yes. Um, now I am in Ishigaki Island, uh, Japan. Mm -hmm. And the time is about 10 o'clock uh, in Japan time. Mm -hmm. Now. And may I ask, how is the weather today? So it is a little difficult. Uh, I will show you the uh, image is yes. of the uh, south southern sky. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, please, please stop the sharing. Oh, you, you can uh, um share the screen with this. Uh, too. Okay. Okay. Do you see the south? Do you yeah. see images? Uh, so this is the uh, south uh, southern sky from mm -hmm. our observatory. 
So uh, several uh, stars uh, can be seen in a part of it. <laughs> so uh, it is uh, too difficult to see stars, but uh, I will try uh, from now uh, mm -hmm. this uh, star. I will try. Yeah. Ah, sorry. <laughs> I, I will. Yeah, so at, uh, at, uh, please show you. Uh, You'll show it to me. Sorry, sorry. Okay, I'll show it. Thank you. Sorry about that. So, what can you see in sky now? I saw some like several stars, but I couldn't find out which star it was. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. So, uh, uh, now uh, I would like to show you a star, uh, mm -hmm. Gamma Delphini. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, this one. Oh, yeah, oh. this one. Yes, this one. So the star is a double star. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks like uh, one star uh, with a naked eye, but mm -hmm. you can see two stars with a telescope. Oh. Yes. So uh, it's rotated around oh, oh, yes. here. Uh, uh, the location, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the star is located on the dolphin's head in the constellation mm -hmm. Delphinus. And uh, the Delphinus is a uh, small uh, constellation. Mm -hmm. Uh, made up only uh, of uh, mainly fourth uh, magnitude stars. Mm -hmm. uh, and it is located to the east of the constellation Akira. Yes. Akira uh, is right you, here. Uh, do you try the stars now? Yes. Do you watch? Yes, I want to watch it. Yes, please. <laughs> yes. So, um, Does everyone uh, want to watch it? So, if you do, this is it. Yeah. So uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I will change this uh, monitor uh, mm -hmm. for the camera attached to this code. So yes, please. Just, just a moment. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right now, Dr. Hanamayama is trying to let us watch the, this. So uh, now, uh, at first, I will open mm -hmm. the switch. Don't switch. Okay. I'll stop. Mm -hmm. Do you see the opening side? Yeah, can you see the back of Dr. Hanayama's? Yeah. Oh. Back side of Dr. Hanayama? Yeah. It's a dome. And the dome opens right now. And do you see the, also see the telescope? Yes. The, no. Okay. Uh, there is a telescope right there. Okay. Okay. I will change the monitor. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Okay. So, do you see the two stars? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, I see that two pretty stars. Yes. Yes, they are shining. Yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, oh, this is real uh, live images. Okay. Uh, I'm presenting. <laughs> I yes. heard that it was cloudy and rainy when we yes. were doing the rehearsal, but now it's yes, we can uh, see partly. stars. Yeah, partly. we can see stars mm -hmm. between clouds. <laughs> uh, so, oh, uh, yes, um, okay, uh. So we are pro providing the images uh, taken by camera attached to the telescope. Mm -hmm. The Gamma Delphini is a beautiful double star. Uh, the distance is about 110 light years. So uh, the brighter star is uh, both magnitude and the color is light orange. And the uh, faint, uh, fainter star is fifth magnitude and the color is uh, white. Then uh, they are thought to be a binary star with a period of about 3,000 years. And the constellation uh, Delphinus is a minor constellation uh, with many uh, dark stars, but uh, it is a summer constellation and has uh, double stars in beautiful color combinations. So it is uh, uh, attractive for me. Yes. It's attractive for me too. Thank you for showing that. Yes. Mm. So, oh, okay. So, 
Uh, then, uh, uh, so this time I, I will introduce the uh, name of the stars in Okinawa Prefecture. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. Yes. I want to know okay. about it. Uh, yes. So uh, before that, I will close the dorm street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you need to close the dorm. <laughs> yeah, it takes Sorry. time to observe stars and like you have to open the dorm first and move the telescope. Yeah. So if yeah. you have some request, I will try. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Okay. Oh, uh, I'll stop there. That's right. Uh, yes, switch is closing. Yes. Uh, so, I will share mm -hmm. the screen. Yes, now I see the telescope behind you. Now he's trying to share the screen and he's going to make it bigger. Yes. So, uh, yes, uh, now I will uh, introduce the name of the stars in Okinawa. So at first, uh, it is Polaris. So uh, this is Polaris. Mm -hmm. uh, it is uh, called uh, Ninu Fabushi. Ninu Yes, in mm -hmm. uh, in Okinawa. And it has been used as a marker for nighttime navigation. So the meaning is a uh, North Star uh, in Okinawa and uh, Nipapushi. Uh, so all uh, it is used for night sailing uh, marker. And uh, the second, this one, mm -hmm. uh, Constellation Scorpius. So oh, this is uh, called Yu Chabushi. Yu Chabushi. So Yu Chabushi. Oh, yes. uh, the meaning is uh, fishing star. Mm -hmm. So oh, because the shape uh, of this uh, constellation uh, looks like uh, a fish hook. So uh, especially the tail part uh, of this constellation, uh, it looks like a fish hook. So uh, it is uh, called uh, fishing star uh, in Okinawa Prefecture. So uh, it, the name is called Yuchabushi. Yes, okay. Yuchabushi. <laughs> yes. It, it is famous uh, star in Okinawa. So on um, the third, uh, the name uh, of Priade Star Cluster, it is called in Japan Subaru. But in, in Okinawa Prefecture, uh, so uh, this is called Murikabushi. Uh, this is uh, the left side uh, panel is the photo of the M45. And uh, it, uh, the Murikabushi uh, uh, it comes from a local dialect name of the star cluster. So then, uh, 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 as is shown in light panel, uh, the uh, telescope in our observatory uh, is called uh, Murikabushi. The name uh, comes from uh, the, uh, this star cluster. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Hanayama. Okay, we received some questions for you. Okay, well, the first question is, what is a reason for reason that stars shine? Can, could you tell us why the star shines? So, uh, so, uh, so, uh, thank it was, uh, uh, and, uh, because of the nuclear fusion in the uh, stars. And so, um, uh, so, uh, for many stars, it consists of, uh, uh hydrogen and helium mm -hmm. gas. And, uh, the, uh, Gravity uh, makes the gas uh, uh, density and the temperature uh, and pressure uh, uh, to be higher and higher. Uh, the uh, nuclear fusion uh, you know, uh, starts, then uh, it makes uh, many light and uh, the star uh, 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 shines. <laughs> Thank you very much for answering. 
Yeah, thank you. So next question is, what is the highest magnitude of this telescope? So um, how, yeah, what is the largest magnitude that this telescope uh -huh. can so, observe? With uh, the naked eye, it is 17 a magnitude uh, mm -hmm. with uh, the naked eye. And uh, with, a car, uh, with a camera, uh, uh, so our uh, telescope has uh, three colors simultaneously amazing uh, observing the system. The camera uh, uh, takes uh, uh, about uh, 20 magnitude stars, uh, 20 or 21 magnitude stars. For a long time, uh, 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 long time uh, exposure. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the next question is, what type of telescope is Murakabashi? Oh, the this telescope is a kind of reflector. Mm -hmm. uh, is a kind of equation telescope. Uh, so, oh, uh, yes, uh, this this telescope. Uh, so, in this telescope, there is a large mirror. Uh, so, the mirror reflects the starlight and uh, and sends the starlight uh, to the. Uh, Classic lens or NASA's mm -hmm. focus point. So, uh, so the diameter of the mirror uh, is about one hundred uh, five centimeter diameter, mm -hmm. and then uh, it is the uh, largest uh, scale uh, in uh, Kyushu of you know, area in Japan. Mm -hmm. Yes. You. Do, do you see the yeah, mirror? But yes. Yeah, I see the mirror. Yes, and it looks uh, very it's, big. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Hanayama. Okay, everyone, please um, push your reaction button to thank Dr. Hanayama. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye. Dr. Hanayama, thank you very much. Now, we will go to next observatory. Okay, we almost come to the end. Next is Indonesia. Dr. Puan and Dr. Ad Abdul is out there. So Dr. Puan is yeah. in Bandan, sorry about that, and Dr. Abdul is in Kuan, Kupan. Hello, everyone. Hello, Hello everybody. Hello, everyone. Hello, everybody. Nice so, Dr. You Abdul, you are at, you're using this telescope, right? Yes, that's correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm inside the dome now. Ooh, inside the dome. <laughs> Our small dome yeah. in Ilong, Kupang, near Kupang. Near Kupang. Yeah. So, could you tell us um what time it is in your area? Ah uh, yeah, so uh currently it is seventeen minutes past nine mm -hmm. p.m. Okay. Yeah. So it's good night time. And how's the yeah. weather? Uh the weather is mm -hmm. yeah, we are lucky today because the weather is really clear. <gasps> you can see um yeah, I can see uh directly using my eyes there are mm -hmm. a lot of stars mm -hmm. uh yeah outside mm -hmm. yeah and we we can we can also see the uh the milky way yeah milky way too wow yeah, yeah. including the 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 the, the center of the, mm -hmm. of the galaxy wow yeah, the That's... uh the constellation sagittarius mm -hmm. yeah. That's so nice really clear so you were seeing the Thank you. Secretarius is right here. And I can I can I can show you my chart if you Oh want. yes, you can. Please show your chart. I'll stop sharing my screen. Okay. Can you see it now? Yes, I can see it. Yeah, so uh what we have on the left, uh, part of the screen is the is the, the chart. From the uh, the software, the computer program that I'm using now to to control the telescope. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is the chart, and you can see here that the uh, the, the mil also the Milky Way. You can see the cross from the uh, across the chart, right? Mm -hmm. Cross crosses the chart from the uh, from the upper left of the uh, of this chart to the Let's say to the uh, bottom right of the chart, and you can also see the 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 part of the 
of the Milky Way, which is very bright uh, because it is the center of the of the galaxy, located in the in the uh, constellation Sagittarius. Yeah. Yeah. And, and my question is, what are we going to watch? Uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, let me, but uh, but before that, I wanted mm -hmm. to uh, to show you um, uh, one of my, uh, the two slides that I mm -hmm. create. Okay. Please share. one okay so ah, okay so uh, about the location mm -hmm. uh, I'm now in Tilong while Tilong. miss yeah in Tilong which is a a small district near the the Kupang city mm -hmm. Kupang city is the uh, provincial provincial uh, city of uh, yeah is the provincial city mm -hmm. the uh, I mean the provincial capital here uh so Tilong is uh, is a small district um quite uh, pretty close to to Kupang which is a major city mm -hmm. but uh and of course uh, like uh, usually like like um like usually we we have for art for great for great cities we have you know a uh, high light pollution while here in Tilong we still have uh, well, it's not really dark, but because of the effect from the uh, from the Kupang city. Mm -hmm. So if we see, uh, if we see the sky uh, to the to the west, and we will see the high uh, light pollution from the Kupang city. But if you see to the uh, if you if you see to the direction uh, of the south. To the south direction, I mean, and uh, and also to the north, and 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 partial mm -hmm. uh, direction to the to the to the east, and you can still uh, have uh, a quite large, uh, uh, I mean, a quite dark uh, sky. So uh, only when you see, when you see to the uh, when you you are. Uh, you you see to the to the uh to the area of the Kupang city then you will have the high light pollution yeah more or less like that and that's the situation in Tilong now and uh so i will explain this slide so uh on the left uh part of this screen of this slide you can see the uh, my country which is indonesia right uh yeah it is quite large city and it is um uh and japan is of course is located to the north of indonesia mm -hmm. while australia to the south mm -hmm. and uh, you can see here the the word of tilong right it's, so tilong is uh is pretty close to australia indeed yeah, you you can see the the image, right? Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's yeah, it's it's close to Australia, and on the uh, right part of this of the slide, you can see the uh, I I zoom in the the image. Uh, here you can uh, see the the island, and the name of the island is the uh, Timor or Pulau. Yeah, the Timor Island. Or Indonesia in Indonesia it is Pulau Pulau Timor. You can see uh, the the name in Indonesian here Pulau mm -hmm. Timor, which is mm -hmm. which means Timor Island. So uh, Tilong and also the Kupang City uh, are located in Timor Island, and we share this island with not with with, with another country, which is Timor Leste. Yeah, so. <laughs> Yeah, so there are two uh, countries in in one island. Okay, so here uh, you can see the Kupang city to, to the uh, yeah to the left uh, lower uh, left part of the island, and you can see uh, Tilong here, very small. Tilong is uh, located about 
uh, half an hour by car from uh, from Kupang City. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, what you can also see from this uh, map is the is the observatorium. You can you you can read the the word here, right? Observatorium. You can see it here uh, mm-hmm. on the upper part of the uh, of this uh, image. Uh, yeah. So now we are currently uh, constructing or building a well. It's 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 quite large uh, observatory, uh, which will con- which will um, uh, uh, which will be located for the uh, for the 3.8 meter telescope wow here in in the in the timo and mm-hmm. the name will be the the, the timo national observatory of indonesia mm-hmm. yeah and uh, yeah so we uh we hope that the the observatory the timo observatory national observatory will be will be um uh, will be finished i mean uh, in this year before the end of this year yeah, the construction of the of the observatory. So again, we have the Tilong uh, city here. It is located. So you can we you you can say that the Tilong uh, district is located between the Kupang city and the Timo National Observatory of Indonesia. Thank you very much for explaining about okay. Tilong. And then yeah. yeah, and then I will go to the next mm-hmm. slide. Mm-hmm. So uh, on the left uh, part of the screen, you can see our small telescope here which we are going to use for for tonight for this uh, online stargazing party and then uh uh well the the telescope is is a 25 uh mirror telescope so it means that it uses a, a mirror not a lens so this is a uh, this is a reflector telescope with 25 centimeter of mirror and uh and using the and use uh, and it and we, we couple the the telescope with the with the with the detector which is a uh, a sony a7s uh, camera and uh, and the combination of this of the telescope and the and the camera gives you uh, around one, uh, one minute, uh, one 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 arc minute of uh, of this uh, say of field of view of the sky, which means that if you point your hand like what like like the the picture on the right, you 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 expand your hand like this image uh, or like this picture, and you 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 point. Uh, your let's say your finger, uh, your uh, yeah your finger like this, and the width of your the width of your finger is about one degree, right? So one degree. Uh, and the yeah so the so the the field of field the telescope is around this one. It's uh, it's around one one degree. Sixty. Yeah, it's around sixty minutes, uh, sixty arc minutes. So it's about one degree. So it means, uh, it means that the the area that you will be seeing if you use if you if you use this telescope is really a small area of the sky. Only uh, about the the width of your finger if you uh, extend your hand like this. So yeah. So we will be using this telescope, mm-hmm. and because, as we know, as as I said before, that the field of view of the telescope is very small, then you have to be able to to set up the telescope mm-hmm. uh, uh, correctly. Otherwise, you will be you, you will point to the to the wrong direction, not the targets in the sky that you are going to to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. So I think that, yeah. that's clear. Yeah. yeah. So let's fast check. And and, yeah. uh, and for this session, mm-hmm. we are already set up the telescope. Mm-hmm. So it, and and we hope that it will work as previously. I mean, <laughs> previously yeah. we yeah, when when we when we test the telescope, it it is okay. 
-hmm. and we hope that it will be it will continue to uh, to to perform like that mm -hmm. okay so i will stop this share here and go back to the to the whole screen okay now i hope you can again minimize this okay so now you can see uh the my whole screen right and uh and here you can see i yeah you can see it, you can see it all i mean i i divide my my screen to to uh into several areas on the left you can see the the sky chart mm -hmm. using the using the software to control the telescope while on the upper part uh, upper right part of the screen you can see the the live view from the detector or from the camera from the a7s camera uh, and on the uh, right uh, bottom or bottom right of the screen you can see the telescope so this is also, also this is also the uh, the light view of the telescope using a smaller uh, camera we have here so i will now show you how the how we how we will uh, perform or how we will point the telescope to the to to the object which is uh, a I will say a regular star. It's it's not really an, an interesting an interesting part. Uh, and I mean it's not really an interesting star. Uh, just a regular star in the sky, which I choose um, randomly. I will say I would say, which is uh, and the name of the star is uh, fifty one uh, mu Capri uh, Capricorns. Which means that the star is located in the in the constellation uh, Capric Capricornus. Capricornus. Right. Okay. So I will now uh, give command to the telescope to point to the star. Uh, sorry. Uh, okay. So because uh, sorry. Uh, before I proceed, I, I I should tell you that now the the telescope is pointing to the to the north to the uh, to the south pole. It is in the parking position, so I have to unpark it first, and then I go to the star now. Okay, so you can see the telescope is moving. It is going to the to the direct to the uh, of course to, to point to the to the object to the star and yeah okay you you can see the star on the uh, upper right part of the screen right you can see it's a very a very uh, yeah, a dot which is the the fifty one uh, mu Capricorn star. Now what I'm going to do is I will is, oh, okay before that what you see here is is only like one star right you can you can also see uh, other other star on to, to the right of the center of the 51 uh, or I would say the our main star there are other star here but then uh, of course we have very much very a, a lot of stars in the sky so I will I will give a command to the uh, to the camera to uh, to take a photograph of the sky using twenty second exposure time. So it, it, it which means that I will open the camera for twenty seconds uh, and using uh, ISO ten thousand, which means that this is uh, uh, that that the that the sensor will be. Uh, will will be sensitive enough to to detect a lot of stars. We'll see. I will take a photograph now, and we just wait for the result. Okay. 
So we wait for 20 seconds. Okay, it's finished. Okay, so now we have, so this is the result. Uh, I hope you can see. Yes, we you can, can see, see the it. Star, right? yeah. So yeah. So the 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 star. Uh, let's say at the center of this image is the fifty one uh, mu Capricorn, mm -hmm. which is our main star, and and um, you can see also other stars surrounding the the main star. Mm -hmm. So this is just like when you uh, when you when you see the sky using your your eyes mm -hmm. uh, without using any instrument a telescope or binocular so you can see that uh, within this small area of the sky which only uh, about one uh, the width of your finger uh, we can see a lot of stars mm -hmm. uh, which are separated by relatively well, yeah great distance right Mm -hmm. I mean, they are not in the in the uh, they are not in the in one small area, but they are separated. Uh, of course, uh, in uh, we, we in in large very large distances. So this is this is uh, more more or less the 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 things of, or the view that you see when you when you see the sky using your eyes. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you very much. We so, very enjoyed it, but it's yeah. almost um time okay. our time, so, okay, so we will um almost thank you. Oh, thank finished? you very much. Thank okay. you. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we cannot Please. go to the others. Uh, to the other target. Ah, uh, sorry, we have oh, okay. uh, no problem. But, no problem. But thank you, everyone. Yeah. Uh, okay. Thank you very much. And um, please you, um, put the reaction. Everyone, please put the reaction button to send Dr. Yeah. Abdul. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I'll go back to the screen. My screen. Thank you. Okay, it's um the end of our event today, we broadcasted from observatories all over the world. We learned the stars and constellations appear in the sky, depending on latitude and time difference. Now, we want you to see the stars and constellations in your area and realize the differences in the stars you saw today compared to other parts of the world. Um, thank you, everyone, for attending this stargazing event. We weren't able to sh share the um, movie from the Svaru Telescope. Um, there was a wonderful movie from um, Dr. Kumiko Musudasato. So we will share um, that movie on our YouTube channel, uh, on the, our website. So please um, watch them later. And we will also be um, uploading our recorded videos on our YouTube channel. So please check that too. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, bye everyone. We hope to see you again someday in the future. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.